Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord this morning. Welcome everyone to Torch of the Spirit Ministries. Hallelujah. Our speaker for this morning is not a guest speaker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all know him as, as Pastor Martin, Pastor Uncle Sniper, and his latest name is Holy Ghost Assassin. Hallelujah. So at this time, our Pastor Martin is going to bring forth the word of God for today. So let's welcome him with hearts of expectation. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Martin. Hallelujah. Boy, I, you know, this morning, um, as we are preparing for service and for the word to go out, one thing that comes to mind is that I hadn't really thought about is the fact that in a few days, we will be celebrating Thanksgiving. And usually at Thanksgiving, families gather around the table and we talk about going around the table and saying what each and every one of us is thankful for. This year, Thanksgiving is on the 24th of November. And I would venture to say that more than 50% of the people on November 25th have forgotten the things that we said we were thankful for on Thanksgiving Day. And I think too often days, we celebrate various days. And when these days come up, we are in the mood for the moment. And then after that day is gone, we forget what we talked about. And the proof of it is in February, February 14th, we celebrate Valentine's Day. And everybody's in love on Valentine's Day. You can't get into the stores because the flower shops are overloaded with people. The candy stores and, and every little other thing that we want to do for those who we love on that day. And by the 15th of February, where's the love? And so I want to talk to you today just briefly about maintaining a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving. Because we celebrate Thanksgiving every fourth Thursday of November without fail. The fourth Thursday of November is always Thanksgiving Day. But every day before that, and probably every day after that, there is no giving of thanks. And what we need to get into a habit of is give thanks each and every day, because every day is a day of thanksgiving, a day that the Lord has made and we can rejoice and be glad in. How many people this morning, and I guess by me seeing you, you on this line, I know that you were blessed this morning and you have something to be thankful for today. Amen. Each and every one of us, God breathed life into you this morning and caused you to be a living being to continue in this earth. And so today you have something to be thankful for. And so if God woke you up this morning, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. And first Thessalonians chapter five, verse 18 says, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so 
regardless of what is going on in our lives, we all have something to be thankful for. And we may not have everything that we want or everything that we think we need, but again, there is something to be thankful for each and every day of your life. Proof that we have a lot to be thankful for. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Can you imagine the position that we would be in if we did not, if there was no plan of salvation to restore man to right standing with God? If Jesus were not the eligible candidate to send to restore man back to God. But today we have a savior who has made promises to us. And because what God has promised to us through his word, we have something to be thankful for. We have the activity of our limbs. We have everything we need. Even in the midst of a pandemic, we have all had, none of us has had a, a run out in food. None of us has had our homes taken away from us, but God has continued to supply all our need according to his riches and glory. And so for this morning, we can say, thank you, Lord. And so there are so many things this morning that we can say, thank you, Lord, for. We can have a heart that is full of gratitude, a heart that is full of thanksgiving. And this is not just for the fourth Thursday of November, but this should be 365 days a year. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. God has blessed us with something. When Adam sinned in the garden, God sacrificed Jesus as the penalty for sin. And for that, we can say thank you. Yes. Each day we receive new mercies. And I had a big discovery for me in Lamentations chapter three. We only read, mostly we focus in on verses 22 and 23. And it reads, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hallelujah. And because of that, we can say, thank you, Lord. But if we look earlier in that third chapter of Lamentations, we see where the prophet Jeremiah, who was, Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet. And Jeremiah lamented over the condition of the world. And even today, as we see the things that are going on in this world, it will cause you to have the lament. But to trust God and know that he will deliver you out of the hands of all of the stuff that is going on in this earth. Thank That's you, something you can say, thank you, Lord, for. Thank you, Lord. I look back in the chapter and it talks about the things that Jeremiah had gone through when he thought that God was oppressing him. But see, many of us, see, wasn't nobody on here born saved. So when there was a time in your life when you felt like all hell was breaking loose in your life. And as you've gone through those things, we see now, as we look now and look back to what has happened in our lives, we can thank God that he has brought us a mighty long way. Yeah. And see, if God has brought you a mighty long way, then we should say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, there, uh, thanksgiving and gratitude are things, well, that's something that God requires. God requires thanksgiving. In Psalm chapter 50, verses, verse 22, it says, now consider this, ye that forget God. So if God has blessed you and you choose not to thank him each and every day, in Psalm 50, it says, now consider this, 
ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces mm. and there be none to deliver. Imagine if God tore you to pieces because we had an attitude with him. We didn't do as he told us to do. And God said, well, I'm going to tear you in pieces for the way that you have been ungrateful. If we've ever dealt with someone and had an ungrateful person in our lives, we know that ungrateful people are not the best ones to be around. But God has said here, he says that I will tear you to pieces and see what God does. Not, no man can undo. But see, Jeremiah looked back over his life and when all hell was breaking loose in his life, now Jeremiah has gotten older and he realizes that because of all the mess that I've gone through, even though I've gone through all this stuff, God has restored me and he's put me in a place today where now Jeremiah realizes that he is now a God, his, his character has been shaped to be a godly man because of what he has been through. When I looked at one verse in particular, it says he have caused the arrows of his quiver to enter my reins. That means that the arrows were hitting him. And then there was some place he says, he have enclosed my ways with hewn stone. He have made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait and as a lion in secret places. Can you imagine, and now many of us are scared of dogs, so if you're walking down the street and all of a sudden there's a big German shepherd comes out, what are you going to do? You get, you're, you're afraid. You don't know what to do. And can you imagine the pressures of life coming down on you like that kind of situation? But today I can say, thank you, Lord, because he has delivered me from the hand of the enemy. When any of us who have experienced any sickness or disease or any lack in our lives, we're no longer in that position because God has made a way for us. He has made provision for each and every one of our lives. Yes. When you didn't have a job, God has now provided you with employment. When you didn't have a roof over your head, it is God that did it. See, Jesus promises us in his word that, but my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And see, God, there is no limit to what God has. The word says that a cattle upon a thousand hills are yours and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And so see, there is no lack in Christ Jesus. But in order to receive from him, we have to walk in the obedience that God only requires. We also have to give thanks for what we have not just be covetous of what someone else has. You know, as we look in each screen, we see in each and other's homes, we don't need to say, well, oh, I wish I had what they have. Because rem remember, your time is coming. Your time is coming. Give thanks for what you have today. And God, as he said, give us this day our daily bread. Each and every day, God blesses us with something in this life. Each and every day, when you open your eyes, you are a blessed person. Each and every day, and even if you have some type of physical limitations, even with those physical limitations, they say, if you're six feet above ground, you still got something to be thankful for. If you have a heart to serve God, serve him out of love. If you have a heart to serve others, serve them out of love.
and give thanks that God has blessed you, that you are able to do for others. If we take what we have and we hoard it all to ourselves and we want to get what everyone else has, then we will be most miserable in this life. Mm -hmm. And as I said, each day we have something to be thankful for. So it's not just that fourth Thursday in November that we can sit around the table and give thanks. Now, I'm not discounting the blessing of a Thanksgiving meal. You know, we can almost smell it in our minds. Yes. The turkey roasting, mm -hmm. the ham cooking, yes. the sweet potatoes and the everything else that is on the table, just the, the, the fellowship of our loved ones gathered around the table. But is that the only day in this year that you're truly going to say or even acknowledge, Lord, I'm thankful and I know it's by your hands that these things are so. Because on the 25th of November, God is still in the blessing business. And so we still have something to be thankful for on that day. You know, we are to worship God as shown in Psalm 100, which says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. John 10.10 10 says, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And here's the hope we have. God says, but I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So see, we have hope. We don't have to sit around and mope because see, we get abundant life not just any old kind of life, any old kind of mundane life. We get abundant life. And for that, we can say thank you. Hallelujah. We can be thankful because our God is alive. Buddha is in his grave. Mm -hmm. Confucius is in his grave. <laughs> Harry Krishna and every other God, and even that one to the unknown God, they are in the grave. But today we can say, hallelujah, Jesus is alive. And because he is alive, he dwells within us. And the word says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so if greater is he that is in me, just think, God, for lack of a better word, he stooped below himself and dwells within each and every one of us. And if he wasn't there, we would have a life most miserable. But today we can say, thank you, Lord, because you're with me. You never leave me nor forsake me. You are a present help in a time of need. We can be thankful today because my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I can be thankful today because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Hallelujah. I can be thankful today because it says to give thanks in all things, in all not things. because <laughs> of all things, but in all things. So regardless of what is going on in my life, just like Jeremiah, I can look back and see where God has delivered me from. And because he has delivered me and because he has his hand on me, then I know that the victory is assured through my praise. And so when I raise my hands and give praise to God, when I give glory to God, when I acknowledge him that he is the King of Kings and that he is the Lord of Lords, I can be thankful that I don't serve a God that sleeps or slumbers. While we are asleep at night, all kinds
kinds of things can be going on. But because thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, yes. you are the glory and the lifter of my head. Mm -hmm. Because you lift up my head, Hallelujah. I know that I can trust you, Lord God. I can trust you with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding and acknowledge you in all my ways and you will direct my path. And if I allow God to direct my path, then I know that my steps are ordered by the Lord. And if my steps are ordered by the Lord, then I know that he's not going to lead me wrong. Wherever I go, he is with me. And God is a God of mercy. He is a God of love. He's not going to forsake me, regardless of how we act. God is always there as a present help in a time of need. And so today we can give thanks with grateful hearts. We can have a heart that is full of gratitude because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, ask yourself, where would I be if he had not intervened in the affairs of my life? When I was sad and downtrodden, God was there as a present help. When I was in the hospital, he was there as a present help. When I just didn't know which way to go, he was my compass that led me to the right place. When it was dark and gloomy in my life, he shined his light. He says he is the one that lights our path. He is God all by himself, and he doesn't need anyone's help. So there is no other God none known to man that can supply our need as he has. And so today, we can have a heart of thanksgiving, a yes. heart of gratitude, and yes. not just limit it to the fourth Thursday in November, but 365 days. And I'll say for the rest of my life, Lord, I will serve you to the fullest without compromise. I will serve you without any hesitation because you and you alone have all my best interests at heart. And because God has my best interests at heart, I can raise my hands and look to the hills from whence come of my help and know that all my help comes Hallelujah. from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And Amen. the word says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall stand forever. There is no other God that they say that about. Nobody else words stand forever, but Amen. our God. And for that today, we can say, thank you, Lord. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. If you have had an ear Amen. to hear, Glory. open up your mouth and say, thank Amen. you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Jesus. Come thank on, you, confess it right Lord. now. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, get in the practice because you need Glory. to be saying Hallelujah. it every day. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. You're worthy, 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 worthy. Thank you. Praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Lord. He's yes. worthy. Hallelujah. 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 I love that Thank Psalm 50. That was very clear. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank now you. consider this, ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't forget God. Hallelujah. We can't yes. afford to forget God. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, Thank the old time you. people used to teach and maybe not so old time, but there's a model of prayer for the saints and it's called the Acts model. And the third leg on that chair is Thanksgiving. So if you're not giving Thanksgiving every day, okay, you're missing part of that four-leg chair. And Come how on. many of you know that if you're sitting on a chair that's supposed to have four legs and it's missing a leg, you're going to fall over. All right. All right. Amen. So you need to have balance in your life. 
We so busy sometimes seeking God and asking God for things, okay? We don't even we don't even do the A adoration, okay? We skip right yeah. to asking for things. And and we're slow uh, to confess, okay? Come on, come on. Come on. And then by the time we get the Thanksgiving, we might thank the Lord for that day, but not go into a depth of thanking him for all he's done. For all he has done for me, he's redeemed and set me free. Hallelujah. And we're good at going right to the fourth leg of the chair, supplication. Yes. Okay. Come on. But we need to stop and give God thanks every day. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because he's given us the breath that's in his body. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Pastor yes. Martin. Hallelujah. Thank yes. you for that word. That's an on-time word. And we give God praise today. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 